old month. Um, and um, the public will be providing comments through um, an online survey. Um, and the public comment period will start this month. So another um, main component of the research solicitation phase is the SOC um, themselves. They're gonna be meeting um, several times in this phase, uh, four to five meetings over the next four months. And these meetings will be primarily focused on developing important components of the request for proposal, um, such as the scope of work, um, which will clearly define elements of the health study project. Um, in addition, the meetings will focus on finalizing the health study goals and priorities um, based on review of the community feedback, and um, this will be incorporated into the RFP. Um, and also another um, item that the uh, Scientific Oversight Committee will focus on during these meetings is cri criteria um, and their weight for evaluating the proposals that are received. So in addition to the work that the Scientific Oversight Committee will be doing and the guidance that they will be providing um, in this phase, um, we'll also be having um, detailed discussions with our um, uh, contract and grants department um, to develop um, components of the RFP, including um, minimum, minimum mandatory requirements, um, the evaluation criteria, and importantly, um, planning promotion of the RFP um, once it's released. So promotion of the RFP will include posts on the public health websites, the Lisa Canyon website, and social media. Um, Additional promotional efforts will also be discussed with the Scientific Oversight Committee to ensure that we are reaching a broad audience and that we solicit uh, numerous proposals that are um, that that um, that are uh, scientifically promising. Um, so, lastly, I just wanted to get into the RFP um, a little more. So, um, Public Health is aiming to release the RFP in the spring of um, this year. And it will be open to all interested research groups, organizations, and academic institutions and others. Um, the timeline is still emerging for the RFP, um, and it will become a little clearer the further along we are in this process. Um, and the proposals that we do receive will be evaluated using the criteria and the, and the weights of the criteria, which the Scientific Oversight Committee will um, have helped establish. Um, and the evaluation committee itself um, we're, we're working with our council currently in contracts and grants um, to determine um, who can be on the evaluation, uh, evaluation committee, um, but we would like for there to be scientific experts on this committee. Um, that kind of sums up um, many of the different elements that we're going to be working on in this research solicitation phase, advancing the program um, um, as we're um, looking forward to releasing the RFP. Um, so, um, Susan, I think we can take questions on this. I know it was a lot of information. But... Sure. Um, so I know, Andrew, you had a question previously, and I told you you'd be the first up here. Um, and Lori also has a question. Um, did she have her hand raised in the chat? So, Andrew, do you want to go first? Sure. Thank you, Susan. Um, you know, something that has, has dumbfounded me for a while um, is, uh, and the CAG has made this request multiple times um, regarding, you know, a, a broader partnership um, with the who of the NIH, um, and that this worst of disaster got none of that. Um, you know, as, as a victim of this, uh, that is a thought that doesn't that, that I can't let go of. Another one is this: everyone on this call knows what knows what the Deepwater Horizon disaster was. Some on this call will know that there is a very large study being done related to that. It's called the Gulf Study. What I can't get my head around is the Gulf Study very simply, and I assume, and I have to assume, because the CAG has asked repeatedly for a sample goals and priorities document and received nothing from public health. But let me throw this out into the world. The Gulf study very simply said, if you help clean up the oil spill for one minute or for or every day, 
We want to know the effects of your exposure to crude oil on your body. I don't understand, and I really would love, and quite frankly, Dr. Sistrunk, who is a SOC member, is on this call. Dr. Nordella, who is a SOC member, is on this call. I would actually like to hear from people who know better why the goals and priorities statement for this health study is not, were you exposed for one minute or for all day for 111 days? If you were, we want to understand the effects on your body from this exposure. Done. Didn't I just do the goals and priorities statement in 30 seconds? Didn't that statement clearly indicate that what we want is that people are studied, not flawed and garbage environmental data, which is what was presented to the talk. I mean, I, I just don't understand. And the community should also know, again, kind of for full disclosure, unfortunately, because of COVID last year, the CAG and the SOC were supposed to spend a day together, literally touring the, our neighborhood, showing them where the facility is, showing them where the homes are, showing them where, you know, the pictures of all the oily myths of the toxic crude oil was. Unfortunately, we didn't get to do that. The result is the SOC, unfortunately, has not really truly been able to understand the magnitude of this disaster, its effects on our community, because two meetings with the SOC is not enough to convey that. And I want to share overall that, you know, Chris, you indicated the SOC has met five times. I think that's for a total of 10 hours. I would argue, as someone who has worked on this issue for five and a half years, they have not spent nearly enough time to truly understand an exposure like never before. There's not been just an organic discussion of, hey guys, what do you think about this? Oh, you know, in my research, I understand this, or we should look at this. It's just a set agenda, too many guardrails in order to, you know, prevent people from having good organic, just scientific discovery. So I'm gonna shut up now. And again, I'm gonna reiterate my request. Dr. Sistrunk and Dr. Nodella on the call the public wants to hear from them, as you can see in the chat. I think you should go to them on this topic. Um, Andrew, I think, you know, one of the things is that, that I said earlier is, um, you know, we don't know exactly what the questions are, and those are the things that the stock would be uh, pushing forward in terms of these are the goals and priorities. Um, Dr. Feynman, I believe, some time ago, uh, talked about some potential study questions not necessarily for this particular uh, research uh, project, but just some ideas of some things, what a study question looks like. And I think that was part of the, the town hall meeting. So I think what you propose is something that they very well could consider. But again, everybody keeps saying that, that we're not doing this stuff or that they're not doing this stuff and they haven't even gone through that. And that's what the, the task is moving forward uh, in terms of uh, the, the meetings in order to get to that point where an RFP actually goes out. So, you know, the comments that, that this is easy and this is what should be done, he's given it to the Scientific Oversight Committee to, to look at, understand these things that are there, come up with questions, and those are the things that will be put back out for the community to comment on related to what they think the goals and priorities um, for the study should be. And Lori, thanks for your patience. Um, yes, I actually have a two-part question. The first part I would like answered after my second question. The first part, since um, we're very fortunate to have both Dr. Sistrunk and Dr. Nordella on this call, attending this meeting, is do you personally feel like you have been given enough information as a SOC member to develop the research goals for us? Um, the second part of my question um, follows along. Um, Andrew reiterated the first part of it that um, the SOC was supposed to spend a day with the keg and get background on the blowout, the community, how it affected the community, where all this happened, how close the community lives to it. When that wasn't made possible, unfortunately, due to COVID, um, many of us were on a subcommittee um, developing a video that we spent, I believe, over six months on that was supposed to be shown to the staff. It was going to show the community how it's laid out, how close the schools 
are for the facility, how close the homes are. So the oily mist, there were to be interviews with people affected by the blowout, which I know it's a study, so maybe there is no human face, but there is a human component to this, people whose lives were destroyed. So I would like to ask, where is that video and when is it going to be shown to the stop? Thank you. Thanks, Lori. Um, Dr. Davis, if you're responding, you're still muted. Sorry. Um, so that uh, video, I think we, you know, we have to think about, um, you know, which, you know, how to move forward. I think the SOC has gotten information, at least in terms of the layout. And Chris, you'd have to tell me if I'm correct uh, of, you know, the, where things are located uh, in terms of uh, the facility and what's around it. Um, but I, uh, I don't know if you have any additional thoughts or uh, insights or tell us, you know, exactly what happened in terms of information. Dr. Davis, having a little trouble hearing you. Your voice seems Sorry, I was asking, uh, essentially I was asking Chris if we can get some insights in terms of what has been shared with the talk uh, related to layout and locations, et cetera. Yeah, so the SOC has been provided with um, aerial drone footage of the area. Um, so this goes over the Elisa Canyon, um, the gas storage facility, also over the communities. Um, so that does provide a good um, look at what the topography is um, of the of the gas storage facility. Um, in addition to that, I mean, obviously, just that footage doesn't capture like the magnitude of the disaster itself and how it impacted the community. Um, as I stated before, um, the Scientific Oversight Committee has heard um, from the community themselves. Um, the community advisory group provided um, a presentation to the Scientific Oversight Committee during the second meeting. Um, and this provided a lot of background on the disaster, how it impacted the community. And I think that was a really good um, session for the Scientific Oversight Committee to hear from the people themselves who were impacted. Um, in addition to that, you know, we, we do have other feedback that we've provided um, to the Scientific Oversight Committee um, from, the, from the community. Um, there's a feedback log that we've been keeping up to date, um, I think ever since the beginning of this, uh, of this study, and we've had hundreds and hundreds of um, inputs into that log. So that's been distilled down into a report um, that has been provided to the Scientific Oversight Committee. Um, and in addition to that, they will be getting um, the community opinion surveys as well to kind of supplement um, the feedback that they've been given. And um, so that, that kind of helps them understand, you know, the, the disaster. They've also been provided with, you know, scientific literature on the disaster itself um, and reports, for example, the CASPER study, how people were affected in terms of experiencing symptoms, um, the public health assessment, um, and um, also uh, air quality uh, studies. So the, um, the study that Gondolez um, did for the Elisa Canyon um, air pattern. So, I mean, <laughs> they've been provided with a lot of information. Like obviously this is not um, like, like a video. It kind of captures that into like a succinct, um, a few minutes, whereas like, sifting through all this information can be a little bit harder. But yeah, I, I they have been provided with quite a bit of information. Thanks, Christina. Um, Brian? Okay. Um, I want to, you know, I'm, I'm listening to this the commentary from DPH here. I'm listening to them in a very calm voice. I'm listening to them pro, uh, provide us with an outline of how this is going to happen and uh, how well it's going and what we're going to accomplish. What I don't hear, and I have made this point uh, months ago, is we are now six years, in the sixth year since this blowout. At no point 
in that period of time, and I've been here the whole time 